Hello, hello, and welcome to the Fed by Farmers podcast with me, Cammy Wilson. And me, Iona Murray. No, that wasn't Iona again. It's just me. She's still in Thailand, living the dream. But before she went away, we did record a podcast with the wonderful Charlotte Ashley. She's got a big following now on most platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Give her a look and a follow. And this week, again... I just, I'm under pressure because Iona isn't here, so we don't have a sponsor for this week's podcast. But what I will do is ask you to take a look at the Fed by Farmers website, where we have a fantastic range, all custom-made clothing. We have quarter zips coming very soon. This was a sample we just got, and, and lots of other uh, exciting stuff to come. It's all custom-made. Label there, anyone watching on the YouTube. If you're listening, thanks for listening. We're very excited to announce we have secured a main sponsor for the year. So we're going to have two businesses that have sponsored the podcast for the entire year, which is really, really exciting. Thanks to everyone who's listened so far or watched on the YouTube. That has gave us the oomph to be able to request some fantastic sums from the sponsors. So thanks very much for that and more to follow very, very soon. But for now, let's hear from Charlotte. And you'll be glad to hear Iona's there too. So yes, let's do let's do the introduction. We have Charlotte Ashley here, all the way from Appleby, which is where they ride about in horses one day a year. Is that correct? That is four days a year, but yes, that is correct. Four days and a make year. cider. Do they? Appleby cider? Is that not a thing? It might be, but not in Apple. No, it's not from Appleby. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's not they, that they make cider from apples. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> easy mistake to make. Uh, they make it all over the place, but it's from apples. <laughs> God, um, no, easy mistake. There's a brewery called Tyrrell Brewery in Apple Bay. There we go. We're going at the Tyrrell, brewery. Is that... we go, yeah, we're going at the brewer's grain. Like the crisps, Tyrrell yes. crisps, same company? No, no, different. it's just a, a guy on his own. Chris is really nice. We're going at the brewer's grain. We feed it to cows. Okay. Lovely stuff. Uh, exciting. And, t- and tell me, free. I mean, we'll get into actually finding out who Charlotte Ashley is. It sounds like someone that would make cuttings. Or Charlotte Laura, Ashley. Laura, Laura, Laura Ashley. Ashley. I wish I Any was. Relation? I wish I was as stylish as Laura Ashley, but no, I'm not. No, but it sounds like quite a stylish name. It Ashley. is a good name, isn't it? It's yeah. a good name. Is, it, my is, name was Charlotte Brownrig. That was very uh, Scottish. Brownrig. Brownrig. Yeah, that's quite a Scottish name, isn't it? Mm. It is. Yeah, a brown rig. It's like something that would be thrown off a dodgy blacky top. <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> is a brown rig running up that hill? <laughs> Better not be anywhere near my house. <laughs> Um, so no, there we go. And, and <laughs> they used Apple to say Bay. that about my granddad. <laughs> <laughs> He's the original. So, like, it's, it's always intrigued me a bit about the the Appleby thing. Uh, is there a lot of thefts in the area during that period? Uh, yes, but no. Given the due, half the time it will be other people masquerading as, and they'll just use the the horse fair as a blanket to cover up, you know, people doing stuff wrong. And um, we've had like. Um, Horse uh, carts nicked and stuff, you know, because big Roy's dad's into trotting. Um, which who else is going to nick a sulky for a horse? Do you know what I mean? It's not really something that's quite, you know, mainstream. We'll just clarify some of these terms. What does trotting mean? Trotting horses are. Did you not come on a podcast to talk about? I hate horses. What are we doing? Right, let's. We'll, we'll go off it. <laughs> trotting horses are. Um, it's a, a just a a, race, a horse racing, but they race them with like little carts on the back. Okay. Like, so they pull, like, a, a cart with two wheels and someone sits on it with, like, the <laughs> legs really wide. And, like, but the horse isn't allowed to canter, it has to trot. Oh, it's like... Uh, I can see BHRC, like, if anyone like listens race. from, like, <laughs> no, trotting, they're no, going to be fuming at me. It's like. like it's like race walking at the Olympics. Yes, it oh, very much okay. is, but they're trotting. And but they, it's they a horse take version it. of race walking, yeah. so it's yeah. like nobody Just actually before. enjoys it. But there's quite a massive... <laughs> but it's a tradition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is a trotting not a thing up here? Well, see, I'm, I'm very, very poor. So I, I don't know anything you, no, about No, trotting is for like poor people. It's poor people's like racehorses. Yeah, but it's not really poor people because really poor people don't have a horse. I thought they rode horses. No, the, the, peop- the, people who, the people who, are, who trot are seen as poor by the really wealthy, but actually <laughs> like, I still look at them as wealthy. There's levels to this, uh, Charlotte, you, you, you won't understand down yeah, here. Well, you, yeah, you don't well, know what it's like down here. When my grandma was younger, she didn't have shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, the four Yorkshiremen, we talk about that quite a lot. I grew up in a septic tank. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> I love that one. Yeah, well, you were lucky to have a septic tank. <laughs> There were 150 of us living in a shoebox in the middle of the road. <laughs> Cardboard box. Aye, you were lucky. 
We lived for three months in a rolled-up newspaper in a septic tank. <laughs> you used to have to get up every morning at six o'clock and clean the newspaper, go to work down the mill, 14 hours a day, week in, week out, for six months a week. And when we got home, our dad would thrash us to sleep with his belt. My father-in-law, he didn't even have a septic tank. They had an earth toilet. There we go. A <gasps> proper, like, you know, an old-school, like, Viking toilet. Yeah. The toilet was outside. Yeah. And they had to go and empty it in the woods. But weird if they put an earth toilet in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it? I wonder if there was just no floor. Why have you brought all this soil in here? <laughs> <laughs> well, that bucket's given me a dead leg. <laughs> like, God, look how... Like, the rim is so bloody sharp, <laughs> Mum. Um, so there we go. Right, we're all poor. We're glad we got that. Yeah, we're all poor. Yeah, yeah, no horses involved. Some of us involved. not as poor as others. So, yes. <laughs> uh, so we're trotting a, a, a daft little thing where they trot horses. No offense, I agree. No offence to our trotting Yeah, friends. no, all it's, the offence to the trotting horses. <laughs> 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 Oh, the vibe, the vibe. They're so, they're so highly strung, these horses, honestly. And like, Will, Big Roy will say to us, right, we're going to go and get these horses in. And, and we'll Big Roy is like, your husband? He, no, Roy is, uh, there's Roy and his dad, they're both called Roy. Oh, okay. So I call it Big Roy. Is? Is Roy's dad. Okay, and that makes Roy. sense. And, and who's Roy? Roy's my husband. Okay. okay, so it's Big Roy and Roy. Yeah. Not little Roy, because yeah. he's, not, he's not that little. Respect. Oh, Roy, man. It's like, who you said, <laughs> you said you'd call me Big Roy in the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I know he is as well. <laughs> I'd have to turn uh, him Answer up. it, answer it. Oh. It's all right. Roy, are you there? Hey, where's the brush for the boiler? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're on a podcast. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. It's just behind it. It literally is just behind it. All right. All right, bye. Love you, love you. <laughs> Uh, oh, that was the most farming thing in the world. Where's the brush for the boiler? No, I just, it was just a beautiful example of, of a real life relationship. That's what it's like when Lizzie phones me. There's no smart. It's just like, it's where's this? You cleaned mm -hmm. it last. Where is it? Why did you do that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Why did you do that? Don't worry, I'll fix this. I'll get it for you. Don't worry. Yeah, that's like, exactly what it's like. It's not a phone to ask anything. Just to tell me they've had Wait to fix it. Wait till they find out I've come on a podcast and talked about trotting horses all the way hell on. <laughs> Yeah, and, and offended our travelling friends. Um, thanks to all our travelling friends that follow the podcast. Um, we know that. They don't have them in Scotland, don't worry. I want to know more about Charlotte. And not the trusting. Do we have to? Wonderful. Yes. So you live on a farm? I live on a farm. Um, I'm not from farming. Um, I grew up in Preston, uh, Lancashire. And I was pretty um, basic. Is that a nice way to describe yourself? Are you a basic bitch? I was definitely a basic bitch. Is um, that a mean girls, isn't it? Oh, yeah, no, I was more mean basic girls. than basic. I was just, I struggled at school. I wasn't particularly academic. I wasn't very bright. I didn't really have any direction. Okay. Um, you know, just like, just coasting in life. And I never did particularly well at anything. And I never found what I wanted to, you know, thrive mm -hmm. at all, at ever. Um, and it's so nice to meet someone that hasn't changed from school. Yeah, oh, yeah I know, literally. Just, sorry, honestly, yeah. literally. <laughs> Thank God I found farming and I don't have to concentrate. <laughs> but that's exactly what Never it is. Never Oh, no, I can't. I can't. I have tried. I've no, tried no, to fit in. Boss. There's just no point. I've tried to fit yeah. in. So sorry for interrupting. And you know what? Funnily enough, the more you try and fit in, it doesn't do you any good. Yeah. It doesn't do you any good at all until you just do what you're doing. And mm -hmm. then you find that you're actually more successful being yourself than you are otherwise but yeah no not from farming at all um i did childcare at college and got kicked out after i think nine months because i just did no work i just couldn't mm. organize my time i couldn't organize myself i was I, you know i was set free out of the you know school kind of you know timetable and then they give you a bit more freedom and i just went way let's go and you know smoke in the smoking area and play on the park and whatever mm. like, i just yeah. didn't have anyone to control me so i just didn't do so then i, I did like dead end jobs i worked in a pot wash and then I landed on care work um, and I ended up doing care in the community and I just used to drive around looking after people. And then I met Roy um, at a party in Manchester of all places and ended up getting together with him. And then I moved in, I think, February 2009. Right. So a few, 15 years ago-ish, give or take. Mm -hmm. um, and he had a farm. And well, he didn't, he, he, they had a Ford garage and they had a, a hobby kind of farm on the side. So it was just like, you know, 30 suckler cows, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I remember like, we'd been on a date somewhere and he was, he was like, right, driving here, call in here and I'll show you my cows. And we were driving down the road to these, this shed. And he's like, just so you know, these cows will always be more important than you. 
Is that what he said? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. And he at least he's him. honest. Yeah. yeah. At least he's honest. And now the cows are more important to me than him, so it's absolutely <laughs> fine. <laughs> you have balance. We do. We both know where we stand. So do you go straight into helping out on the farm? Uh, yeah. So they were really busy at the garage. When I moved, I ended up doing care in the community again because mm-hmm. it was just... To be perfectly honest, it was all I had the concentration for. I'd, I've been fired from every office job I've ever had in my life. And it's not exactly a, a, a claim, you know, that you could be proud of, but it's very true. I just, and I've had many of them. I've done temporary work. I've written lasting wills and powers of attorney. I've done all sorts of things, mm-hmm. receptionist work, accounting work. Uh, I worked at a call center for a short while and I got fired from all of them. Just couldn't concentrate. Just can't yeah. sit still. There's, I need to have something to constantly like visually kind of stimulate me. That's why farming's just like, it's just perfect mm-hmm. for so, me. So you have like ADHD? Yeah, pretty well. Yeah, yeah, to be fair. Like I'd, if you read them things on the internet. Yeah, I did a test. The that's other day. me. Yeah. I did a test. I scored mm. quite high. Oh, no. Did I you? Scored. Yeah. Although one was that one of the things apparently is part of it is a, a temper. Like a sudden temper, yeah, but yeah. actually that wasn't me. So that scored and put my score down, but it still said that you, know, mm. you, you basically it looks like you have ADHD. So it's funny. It's and I want to tell you, I'm terrible for like. Do you just like? Oh, it's going off. Yeah, I like should talk about something, and I start talking about something totally different while she's talking to me about something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> But it's like you have you have in. ten seconds to yeah. get me. Yeah, and Podcasts then I'm thinking and about things else. are always really hard work because I feel like you try and like associate with the person who's talking so you kind of go oh i know what you mean i want to share my experience because i'm trying to relate to you but really it just sounds like you're overriding someone absolutely see the first few of these podcasts and that's why i'm sit- i'm like squeezing my hand because i constantly you want to say something oh, because you want that, to see, relate I watch to it them. back all i'm doing is interrupting and yeah. like i text i want i text you last night yeah it's like i was watching uh, the, the one of the podcasts back mm. and every time i want to ask something i like rephrase it the way I want it to be <laughs> like so I like shout over her mm. and rephrase but and I'm like oh it's like almost because she's spoken now I can speak it's great well, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah 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 like I've interrupted so now yeah well, it's can... like I'm waiting to speak and I'm like don't speak Cammy don't speak it's like oh I'm gonna just interrupt and I'm gonna speak <laughs> I need to say what I'm gonna say now <laughs> yeah and then I, I <laughs> before I forget yeah exactly so then I say it and I, I honest question doesn't get answered and it's like really Roy rude. gets really, cross really rude. Roy gets really cross at me he's like Will you answer the question that I've just asked you instead of coming out with something completely different? I'm like, no, but it's kind of following on. In my mind, it works. It's following on from Mm -hmm. what he's said. And he's like, no, you've just changed the subject. I'm like, yeah, but it makes sense. It's a really funny thing to try and deal with. And I think the thing I've struggled with most when I've watched back, I did quite a bit with the HDB um, on, like they called it the circle of (laughs) influence, which was just made me sick in my mouth a little bit. Um, But it was really handy for me to learn the hard way how to conduct myself in a panel Mm -hmm. because so there was like rebecca wilson you know like becca and lizzie and rebecca's yeah yeah yeah. they've changed now haven't they but she's incredibly clever and she went to cambridge and she's very well spoken she knows how to put herself across Mm -hmm. she's calm collected she's honestly she's a gorgeous person and i sat next to her and i went home and i cried and i was like i'm so shit compared to her like she was perfect And I was like, I said to Roy, I was like, I hate her. I, I, I like, I'm just so rubbish compared to her. And watching it back, I was like, no, do you know what? I need to sort of like tweak how I'm responding, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is something that you don't think you're ever going to have to learn, especially not when you're bombing about on a farm and shouting at each other and, you know, you're wrangling cows and whatnot and speaking to your kids. You don't think you're ever going to be in that situation, which another one was like saying, mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. So when mm. people are talking, I'm going, yeah, mm, yeah, mm, mm, yeah like yeah. this. And then all you can hear on the <laughs> on the podcast mm. is people talking. Mm, yeah. <laughs> like literally like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I do notice that too. Yeah, when I edit some yeah, back. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm quite bad for saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like reassuring them. Yeah. But it depends the guests. Like you, you don't really need it. But uh, some guests, they need it. I feel like they maybe just need that reassurance yeah, to keep yeah, yeah. them speaking. Mm-hmm. Because some people, if they start speaking too long, now I can tell you, don't worry about that. But if they, they, <laughs> they, no, yeah. no, they all of a sudden start thinking, I've spoke too long here, this is getting boring, I better stop. And they start... Tailing off t- a bit. Tapering off and you think they're, they're on a great thing here, just keep it yeah. going. So you just reassure them, yeah, like, oh yeah. But no, yeah, yeah. Becca Wilson, mm. honestly, she, and I'd, I'd spoken to her about it and I was like, I just didn't know when to come in. I didn't know when was my place to speak. She had a good laugh know. too, didn't she? She's, she's hilarious. She's God, she can drink. Yeah, she's, Honestly, yeah, she's, God, she can hold some drink and she's, she's only small. She's quite, quite hardy. Oh, she's great. 
And she literally was in this live stream and someone directed a question at her and she said, well, actually, I'm going to direct this one at Charlotte. And she literally threw it at me and I was like, mm, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's just, it was learning the hard way. So I suppose it did some good for me. But I think Young Farmers is good for things like that. Young Farmers is great. Mm -hmm. Did you do Young Farmers? Not really. I kind of like, start, I went to a few things, but I wasn't really into it. No, never did speech making. And all no. These, they do speech making. Yeah, they do all sorts of things like that. Mm -hmm. Even just like the stock judging, you have to stand in front of us at a group of judges and explain yeah. yourself and mm -hmm. speak clearly and, you know, be assertive. I think it Great for business and life. It teaches you as well about like management structures early on, which is something interesting. So when you go into like AHDB or the NFU or which I'm in no way affiliated with either, but when you look at them and you don't understand how the NFU management structure works, well, it's very similar to the young farmers. So these kids are all learning like subconsciously how an organization works early on. Mm -hmm. Whereas when mm -hmm. you're not from farming and you didn't go to young farmers, I think you do realize, you only realize when you're older what you've missed out on, I think. Yeah, yeah. like I never did young farmers, but I would certainly get my kids into it. Yeah, I would. Um, mainly yeah. for like, as far as I can see, it's the easiest way to find a dairy farmer's daughter with no siblings <laughs> yeah you're not wrong <laughs> do you know Definitely. what I mean and get them in young yeah yeah get yeah. them together young yeah mm -hmm. yeah make Arranged soulmates marriage. for life soulmates yeah. for life yeah it, yeah we're looking I mean I'm not crazy like if, if Jock finds somebody with 300 acres yeah you take <laughs> and some good sheds then I'm happy yeah I'm happy for listen him. if he wants so. an 11 year old ginger I can sort him out and it's not like we sort <laughs> this out now how many acres have you got good. Well, like two, two, 200, is that all right? Oh, that probably is that do. all right? Is that, probably is that, is that... We probably should talk about, let's actually talk about the farm. Yes. T t <laughs> give us your farm and some numbers, actually. <laughs> well, we are a kind of farming podcast, but we're very well, loosely, yeah. very loose farming podcast. So the farm is, um, it is 100 acres in a ring fence around us in Appleby. And then there's another like 100 odd acres like elsewhere. So there's like, we have, uh, there's a 40 odd acre allotment on top of Staymore, which is pretty, you know, high up. Um, you can't really do a right lot with it, but the way farming's going, it's bloody brilliant because any paperwork, you just tick, well, we don't put fertilizer on. We don't do this. Mm. We don't stock it then. Because, well, you can't stock it because it's full of snow. Mm -hmm. You can't do this. You can't do that. And it literally just, it's great. It's coming in really, really useful. Um, and then we just stick the sheep up there in spring. It's it's wonderful. It's doing really well. Um, but currently we're beef and sheep, um, but we're going into dairy, um, which is, Mental. Yeah, people go, why are you doing that? And I'm like, to make some money, really. Um, we love... You think dairy will make you money? Yes. Okay. We're in need. We're going economics. into a niche. We're not just going into milking black and white Holsteins. We're going into a niche. So we're going for no employees because Roy's had a garage. Mm -hmm. They employed like 10, 11 people. Definitely had enough of employing people, maybe. I love it how you're going to be employed by him and then... I'm advising him not to employ people. No, but my accountants advise me not to employ her as well. Yeah. Yeah, but like I, I've told them, it's like, no, like you, you don't know her, like I know her, like it's going to be worth it. Um, you I think. It. And, and funny, <laughs> we're saying this. I don't Only think, if you get Botox. We've, we've not actually mentioned this in a podcast, how I ha came to be here. Yeah, um, how did you come to be here? And and uh, like, I only didn't realise this either because I just said this to you yesterday, mm -hmm. something, but like I just messaged, I was sitting one night and I was like, this is getting too much. It is getting too much for me to, to run all this. And yeah, I'm not yeah. doing it. And anyone who follows the YouTube will realise I'm not doing enough farming stuff. Uh, to be fair, there's not much to do this time of year anyway, but yeah. uh, which works in great. But I'm not doing enough. I want to farm. I don't yeah. want to sit in an office. I like this po podcast and I love it. But like, I don't want to sit in an office and do all this stuff. Mm. And it's just been getting so big now that it's getting half done. You know, yeah. things aren't getting done right. Mm -hmm. And then the show season's coming and it was a disaster. I lost so many days shearing, trying to organise shows and all yeah. this nonsense. I, there was, they took the pleasure out of it a bit. So I thought, who can I get? I basically needed another me. Mm. That's what I thought. I need another me. She's just like you, obviously. Well, <laughs> I thought, who's who's got the banter? Who's like, you know, a laugh, good to work with, doesn't take things too serious, but it's fairly switched on. Yeah. I thought, I want a Murray. And then I dropped her a message and it just pure Did luck. Did you know each other anyway? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, yeah. so you knew each other anyway. Yeah, I've known her for years. years. Um, although I probably hadn't spoke to you for years. Four, four years before yeah. that. Maybe passing at a show. Mm -hmm. And you just got a random message saying, can you come and help me? And do you want to know the weirdest thing? I had just got back from holiday with my mum the day before. And on that holiday, I decided to hand in my notice at work. And I'm glad you had a holiday because you won't be getting any more. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually true. That's actually true. <laughs> and I had just, well, on that holiday, I made the decision I was going to hand in my notice at work. And 
then Cammy sent me that message and I screenshotted it and I put it into my family group chat and I hadn't told anybody at that point that I was leaving apart from my family and they were like, how can he know? And I'm like, he really That's doesn't. Crazy. So it literally, yeah. Fate. And that, and it that is, pure, but, but I talk about luck. so many people. I talk about luck all the time. Yeah. Oh, so many things happen that they're just meant yeah. to be. So It's so, crazy. So that's how we're here. But yeah, so I want to know the economics of this. You think this will make you money? Yeah, it's not just that. So before we got the farm, there was um, obviously small suckler herd at Roy's dad's house. There was no land around the farm whatsoever. It was literally just a couple of, you know, five acre paddock here and there kind of thing. And, and for anyone wondering, a suckler herd is you're, you're bringing beef cattle. Yeah, beef uh, cattle. So they would be um, now they're blue cross cows. They, at the time, they were like limit cross cows. But then obviously, as me and Roy grew together, um, we are, well, I am maybe slightly lesser of a person than his dad should we say? Mm -hmm. And I think with the limmies, they were very unruly. Anything that did need help was liable to kill you. Um, luckily, they were quite good and they tended to carve themselves and didn't need a right lot of help. But say you were mothering a calf on, you had a high risk of losing your arm. Do you know what I mean? They were quite unruly. So when we got bigger and we went, uh, we got our own farm um, next to uh, like a, a, a bank of land that Roy's dad had and we mm -hmm. approached the people and Thank God they said yeah, mm. and they they sold the farm, which was, it's it still doesn't it doesn't really like twig in my head that what's kind of happened like it just doesn't happen like that. Anyway, they agreed to sell the farm. They had jerseys, absolutely wonderful. So we had it in our head from day one. We want to milk jerseys on that farm, and everyone's like, oh yeah, you'll you'll grow out of it. Don't worry, you know, <laughs> you'll be fine. And we didn't. And since day one, we Big Roy said, you farm for a year and change nothing. So we farmed for a year and changed nothing. There were till, tin and pole sheds, not that there's anything wrong with that. Um, and they all worked remarkably mm -hmm. well. There was no pneumonia. Everything was fine. They they did, they worked really well, but they were all kind of very old. Mm -hmm. um, and then the year passed and we just started putting infrastructure in for milking jerseys. So everything we've done from three-phase electricity, putting the lane in, which was an awful lot of concrete, like an, an eye-watering amount of concrete, we put this massive lane in. Oh, Let's talk, I like to talk money on here because like, nobody talks money. Royal kill me for getting the numbers wrong, but I think it was like it was over thirty grand. Just for a track into the farm. The the three phase was the similar. Um, it, honestly, it's crazy. The amount of infrastructure that we've put in is crazy, but it's all with a view to milking the cows. So how did you finance that? Uh, Roy Todd House okay. years ago, and he'd put some money onto the stock market basically right oh, um, and done and he's he's really very clever clever. Well, he's mm. clever he's switched on he's, he's he is he's a really clever person he honestly he's wasted on farming and i say that in the nicest possible way like he's always got to be building something like he's a businessman mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of thing and so's his dad and they're just they're exceptionally clever and he will we'll build we'll start milking cows and you'll see him go oh, i want to do that What's next? and he'll have to yeah. do something yeah. else mm -hmm. there's always got to be something else um he is, he's absolutely wonderful. But yeah, it's just, it's been a long road. And I think because it's been so long, people forget that we've always had that view to milking cows and they're like, oh, you know, they've kind of forgotten about it. And it's like, well, no, it's just been a very long road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And we like to oh, put- 30 grand, it must be quite a long road. It is, it's <laughs> point 0.3 of an acre. <laughs> <laughs> point 0.3 of a mile, sorry, not an acre. <laughs> point 0.3 of a mile. Um, it is, it's, it's, you could run, I think it was like 14 times was 5k and I used to take the terrier when Rufus a little lad was really young I used to put him to bed and I'd just run up and down the lane oh so you went far from home so you could yeah, yeah so okay. I could just and then every time oh. I was passing his window and it literally just run up and down the lane and then no one would come in and out and he'd be fast asleep and I had a baby monitor in the porch mm. oh, it was grand I loved it it's always a really good test for your mental strength that as well yeah because you pass the door every time so oh, you could just yeah. stop now oh no mine was passing the 5k mark as soon as I passed 5k I was fine and then it started getting to the point that I'd get past 5K and I'd be like, I'll go a little bit longer. I'll do 10. Yeah. And it, but it was like, what would be like 24 times up and down the lane. Yeah. yeah. But as long as I had good music, I was fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But as to, as to, like I used to run all the time. That was I, my do. Thing. I need to get back into and, it. And I, I used just... to always make my routes that you would, you would, like you could do, I could easily have done bits that are just three laps. Mm hmm. But it's too easy after that first lap to be like, oh, if I be niggle there, or oh, yeah. I'm just not feeling yeah. right tonight. Do you know what? I've done a lap. I'm not. I don't know whether it was... if you if you run five miles out, you have to run yeah, five miles back. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So that's it it was like the monotony of it as well. I I think that's I terrible. enjoyed. Running's terrible. I, I thought I just... you like running. No, I'm good at running, but I hate, I hate running. I loved it. Really? Yeah. I only did it because I was good at it. I enjoyed. I can maybe be unfair. I enjoyed 
Um, what did I enjoy? I'm actually not sure what I enjoyed. Really? Finishing. The best thing about racing is the end. How how f- far running, was your biggest? Yeah. There's a great saying in, in running is that well I, I I've not heard this saying I say this but but the hardest part is getting over the the hardest part of your run is stepping over the door. Yeah, it is. Oh yeah, I 100%. agree. Once you're out, you're out. But oh, it's getting I'm, the shoes I've on, the shorts. I've lost oh. it. I want to mm. run for a year. And I keep thinking, I must get back into it. I must get yeah, back into it. but you don't it. actually bloody do it. Yeah. But I never get out. I just do yeah. not have the motivation yeah. at all to yeah. even start. And I like, I, I really need to do something. And you always feel, no matter how bad you think you feel before it, you always feel better after. 100%. And I'm you like, oh, never I don't have time. Like, as yeah. if I don't have 20 minutes. Are you I know, for real? I know. That's yeah. my favourite one. Yeah. Folk, I say to folk, you need to get fit. It's good for you. I don't have time. 20 so, minutes. Or, or the, what yeah. I do. And at half an hour. Like, yeah. My thing just now is press-ups. Like I do press yeah. ups virtually every day, and like all you need is press. I am. A, I've got this other theory, right? <laughs> all you need is press ups. Okay. Honestly. Planking. Like, oh, well, yeah, but but like, but like all you need is press ups. It's working your core. Mm-hmm. It's it's doing your shoulders, your chest, because press up techniques all over the place. Chest, biceps, triceps. Yeah. Legs though. Legs a wee bit too. Not really. It, it does. My legs get shaky because they're so weak. So it must be doing legs a wee bit. <laughs> Yeah, it'll do them. Yeah. Whether or not do you've got these because you're tensing up like a plank. Yeah, you've, got to, you've got you've got you've got to keep that Quads. tense. Quads. You've got to keep that tense. To, yeah. When you hold a plank, your legs start to shake. Yeah, they do. Mm-hmm. So your legs are doing a wee. Okay, your ankles. Not much. What your ankles? But toes. I will. I will, I will <laughs> quite often throw in some air squats. Uh, although I hate them, like I absolutely hate them. Whereas I quite enjoy press ups. Yeah. But like, there's there's loads of great apps for that. And I honestly, see for fitness. Mm-hmm. Whenever anyone says I don't have time, I'm saying just start doing press ups and see the difference you feel. Start sharing sheep. Well, you, you, fine. You, you st- well, that's why I don't really worry about fitness because I'll always <laughs> have sharing. Say. But like, you start feeling your t-shirts filling out, and it gives I've you a buzz never, to do more. For years, I've not worried about fitness. Yeah. Never had to. And I always think it's all right if I'm getting a bit fat. Lambing times come in, I'll be fine. Yeah. And then I'll be yeah. like, I'll lose loads of weight and I'll be like, oh, this is great. It's so unhealthy. <laughs> it's yeah. a really wrong way to look at things, isn't it? I did that through scanning season the last I'm better now, but like I would just start eating crap because I was like, oh, enjoy the winter mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll lose it all. And I'll lose it all. Yeah, yeah, that's me. But, but anyway, yeah. I want to get, we need to get oh, tangents. <laughs> I know. What are we talking about? Here? Right, let's get back. Honestly. Oh, farming. Yeah, yeah, but oh, I, wa- yeah, I want to know about the economics of how Jersey cows are going to pay. So we wanted we're ideally sixty grand down already. <laughs> we're a lot. No, we're way. We're a lot, a lot down. Um, it need it needs to pay. Like we we've always said, we're too deep in now to to back out. Like we we we're screwed. We need to do it. Like there's no choice. So yeah. the robots are here. Um, I haven't put them all over social media. So you're doing robots as well? Yeah, two robots, 120 Jersey cows. So two robots, and the robots are forty grand each, fifty grand each. More. Obscene. Inflation, eh? Yeah, well, tell me. I, I don't actually know what they are, to be honest. They're really, really expensive. <laughs> 70 grand each. <laughs> They're like the price of a terrace house. I bet you live in Appleby. I live in Kilmarnock. <laughs> We're going back down to 50 grand now. <laughs> <laughs> there is not houses for 50 grand. Yeah, in Kilmarnock, yeah. Two bed house. You mm-hmm. get a two bed semi in Kilmarnock for 50. Maybe 60 now. No, yeah, you'd get it for 50. Never. Yeah, well, yeah. my two bed flat in Streven was 70. And that's, and got, that's, that's a nice, nice area. Hey, that's good. Oh, Scotland's. That's really good. Different gravy. I've got a. A three bed semi detached with a detached garage and a really nice bit of Kilmarnock. I know what folk will say, there is no nice bits, but yeah, and it was 110,000. Is that where we are now? No, this is more expensive here actually. This is Stewarton. So this is, oh, this, is this, nice. this is nicer again. But I this, did see it's a all about how... trackies with a bulldog, but you know, it's. Yeah, every place has got them. <laughs> but this is, we're trying to get rid of those. Um, but like, we're quite close to Glasgow here. So yeah. the closer you move to Glasgow, yeah. the mo- like Straven's even closer again. So that's expensive. And Stuarton's got a train link as well. Oh, so the closer you get to Glasgow, the more expensive it is. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yes. especially with Stuarton having the train, that makes a big difference. Yeah. So in like yeah. Ayrshire, the further down you go towards Dumfries. So if you go to like Newcomnock, Newkirk, mm-hmm. there'll be houses in Newkirk for like 20 grand probably. Yeah. Because like, yeah. mm-hmm. there's nothing there. And, and, and they're obviously not great houses. They're, they're old count, like miners' houses. You know, they're not old council houses. But yeah, there's cheap. Roof. There's cheap property, mm-hmm. yeah. And storage heaters, they'll be fine. They'll be mm-hmm. warmer than my house. If we don't put the boiler on, that was what it's ringing for, asking to we need to clean the boiler because it wasn't working properly. We're on, like, biomass. Mm-hmm. And, like, if you don't clean the boiler, the radiators don't work. Mm. Like, yeah, that's yeah. how, it's like, primal up. it is. Yeah, mm. you end up just going back to basics. And everyone goes, oh, isn't it lovely? And I'm like, oh, yeah, but if you don't chop the wood and you don't put it on the boiler yeah. and you don't line the boiler and you don't clean the boiler, you don't have any hot water. Mm. Like, that's how it works. Mm-hmm. So, like, last night we're, like, feeling the radiators and I was like, oh, I'm maybe, maybe clean the boiler off. 
<laughs> and you're like, I can't. I've got to go into a podcast. Yeah, I but know. We've done it again. We literally right, did. How? We li- this is this is. Like, I think it's the two, two ADHD so, right, people together. The, yeah, right. So the, right. Robots are <laughs> here. Iona, will you step in, please? I will. And referee right. this Cheryl's, Cheryl's, Charlotte. Seventy thousand each for the robots. In three sentences, please tell us how you're making. We're two hundred grand pay. down already. How we're making fortune down? Sorry, I nearly swore then. No, that's okay. I can cut that out. <laughs> yeah, I'll just um, swear. No, oh, no, no. I, I'm quite good. I used to swear a lot. We're okay, again. Charlotte, back. Oh, I love it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, she's yeah. gone. She's domineering. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, jerseys. The robots are here. They're in. Uh, they are in a shed. I don't know how we're going to get them out of the shed. But weird if you had them outside. Did you? You were at the York Show. Yes. Did you see the robot milking in the middle of the York Show? Uh, the Lily. That was our robot. Oh, so you got the Lily mm, from yeah. that same one. That is ours. It yeah. came from our house. And they borrowed it and they oh. took it to the Yorkshire show. They plunked it in the middle. They milked on it. Did you get a discount or a, did no, they hire it? No, we didn't. didn't and I, yeah, I know I should sort this out. I mean, come on, Lily Longtown. <laughs> but they're using your... Th- oh. I know. Yeah, and it never been used before? No. Wow. Yeah, I know. I know we both did that. You'll get a discount on the third one. No. Well, they quite keep easy. wanting us to have a third one. And quite, we're not, no. quite easy. So we only want know. two. We'll hire it to you. So we want no staff. Me and Roy. That's it. Um, well, um, now oh, you've got robots. Like, that seems a lot easier. Yes, and then we want. We want. Obviously, we want to have some sort of quality of life at some point. <sighs> That's overrated. I know it really is. That's what we think. And we'll maybe have like someone come I in. Owners into that quality of life nonsense. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm really just into the farming. Is the quality of life, isn't it? <sighs> it's like it's for folk with too much time to think about how miserable their life is. Just keep going on. Do you not think people that don't have enough to do get more miserable? You literally were saying that yesterday. Like they don't think I had a theory that I can't put on a podcast because mm. I don't think it's appropriate, but I'm about to say it anyway for this podcast. And I don't I think I've got to be really tricky but I have I've got to be careful how you word this. I think people that I don't, don't have enough people, going on in their lives have it, too well, much pa- time to think and their brains play pa- like partly that partly that and I said t- this literally yesterday. Yeah. This is weird that you mentioned very weird that you've just said that because I sat down with my night yesterday before we started recording. I said I don't want to put this in the podcast. I'm gonna say it now <laughs> because you've <laughs> egged me on. But I said, I have a theory. And I watched a, a I watched Business Insider on YouTube. Yep. Incredible channel. Yeah, like yeah, the things you I learn about it. the world. It's amazing how they make stets and hats. And oh, yeah, no, anything. It's like how it's made on How sky. it's made. And Love it's it. why things are so expensive. And yeah. it's really interesting. And they were following these people who live on rubbish tips in Jakarta. I, I'm sure it was Jakarta. And they literally live at the bottom of the the rubbish, wow. the dump. They I live there in wee shacks. stuff, though. Well, yeah, but, but like that is their life. Wife and kids, they live in these wee shacks and they get their food from the rubbish tip. They sit, they sit at the back of the lorries as they unload and they all, there's maybe 30 of them. And I'm just sitting watching this thinking like, they were all fairly, I'm not saying they were overly joyed and happy, but they were making jokes and like they were quite, and nobody mm-hmm. appeared, I'm sure some of them get depression, but. Nobody appeared depressed, and it kind of got in my head. It's like, why aren't these people depressed? They've mm-hmm. got the monotony of having to, us, to like hunt a gatherer, though, haven't they? That's what I said. Literally, oh, what I actually, said. Yeah. Literally, I, I said the worst thing that's happened to humans is we no longer have the hunter gut when all you have to think about is surviving. Yeah. So all those people have to think about like, is tomorrow, mm-hmm. is to survive. Like they don't obviously, think about, it's like they don't have social media going. Oh, he's got a nice exactly. holiday. Yeah. So like Roy's Roy's mum, like it's Roy's mum's funeral yesterday, and she's just died, and it was absolutely it's it's. It's terrible and it's proper shite, do you know what I mean? But, like, I'm sat there and I'm like, you know, farming's still there. Mm-hmm. Morning of a funeral, anyone else would be like, oh, God, we'll get up, we'll get ready. And they've got time to think. Well, like, right, get outside. We've got three Co- sheds Co- to Co- feed. So We've true. got the mm-hmm. cane needs to fill in. You need to chop the beet. We need to do this. I'll go to Chapel Hill, which is Roy's dad's house, and feed up there. And we need to get the kids off to school and we need to do and like literally it's the the it's just so time. grounding is farming. You know, COVID, mm-hmm. everyone else is like driving themselves mad watching YouTube, which is great. Mm-hmm. Yay. Um, but we just carried on. And I think yeah. we fared so much better for having that. It's just it grounds you. There's mm-hmm. nothing changes. People can die. You can get ill. You can have COVID. COVID can be going on. There could be a, a, a bomb drop on London doesn't matter because you've still got to feed your animals yeah and you've still got to, and the seasons i think like they just come and they come and go and you're not going to stop them and you just realize how small of a part you are of it because spring's still going to come mm-hmm. like maureen's died it's horrendous lambs are still going to lamb mm-hmm. you know the cows are still going to calve mm-hmm. and we still have them jobs to do and i do think it keeps you yeah. sort of on the straight and now yeah. especially mentally as well which i'm not diminishing like there is a huge 
mental health crisis, especially in farming. It is, and that's why I didn't want to talk about it, because it's almost like I'm saying that people with mental health issues and, and depression, perhaps I'm saying that they don't have enough, to, and that's not what I mean at all. No. And, and, and one thing I always say is, I am very lucky because I don't understand depression mm. because I've never had it. Like, I don't mm. understand. I, I, yeah. I, and folk need to be aware that when we talk about, and I, I never, like, you sometimes see, hear people flippantly say, oh, I'm depressed. Which is something you should never be flippant about because no. being depressed is like a chronic illness. Yeah, it is. Like I've, it, I've had it close. Like, you can't just shake it off. To it's, me. it's a chronic but illness. But I am so lucky that I've never suffered. And I think it makes me, I don't know whether it makes me hard because I am very like, oh, come on. You know, like, I man think, up. But I think it's just, I just think it's luck again. Yeah, it's all very luck. much. But I've had it so luck. close that I understand it inside and out and I see it from the outside, which is, sometimes it's a really tough place to see it from as well because there's actually nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. And I just, I always think it's just like cancer. Yeah, it is, it's awful. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's like, just a miswiring of the brain, isn't it? If you'd broken your arm and one of your veins wasn't wiring up properly and your blood wasn't going around, people would feel sorry for you. But because there's a misfire in your brain, mm -hmm. people tend to think it's something to feel less sorry for. It's not. It's an absolute... It is, it's, a, it's a cancer. It's awful. Mm -hmm. And just to be aware... Like, I went and I did a um, NatWest Business podcast and I ended up mentioning it. Um, I'd been on a... You know, when Ollie Harrison did his combine run from the top to the bottom... Um, and she'd asked it, she'd obviously been on my social media and she'd asked me about it and I wasn't expecting to talk about it. And she was like, is there a real issue in farming? And I'm like, there's a huge issue in farming mm -hmm. because the outside pressures of farming as well, your financial pressures are one because they're just crazy and they really are crazy. But if you do something wrong, stuff dies. Mm -hmm. Like if you can't afford to feed, there's people that are choosing between feeding their animals and feeding themselves, which is absolutely abhorrent. It shouldn't be like that. It's just crazy. But it's like, you know, it's the industry we're in. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, but to twist things on a lighter note again, I don't think we even got... Oh, yeah, that was really the, depressing. Sorry. No, no, but the question you asked, I don't think we answered <laughs> no, it. and it was really tricky to button, you because know? It got sorry. Serious. It got serious. You need, and I thought, you need guys, jerseys, 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 jerseys. Yeah, right, jerseys. Right, yeah, jerseys. Right, so two robots, huge big shed. So the shed's up. That's it's the been fifth up time since... you've started with the two robots thing because you've had to reset yourself each time. I know, time. yeah. Listen, right, so we know you've got two robots. They went to Yorkshire Show. Two robots, Yorkshire Show. shed. No staff. So shed went You're 200 up. 200 grand in now. Oh, God, keep going. Even more. I'll keep uh, adding it up. <laughs> yeah, just keep totting up. Yeah. Just keep going and I'll tell you when to stop. Um, so big shed went up in, I think it was 2020, just before COVID. And Roy bought it really, really well. Um, it was at a time when we were just coming out of Brexit and everything was a little bit kind of up in the air and no one really knew what they were doing. Um, SNA buildings at Banner Castle, who have been absolutely wonderful, were kind of going off on their own. And anyway, they did the shed for us. It was obscenely cheap looking back. It wasn't at the time. We thought it was really expensive. How much was it? I can't, I can't honestly, I, I, I know I would. She's good, isn't she? Like, honestly, I feel like I'm interviewing Richie sooner. Yeah. <laughs> honestly. Who? Like, it's like everything's a deflection. Like, yeah. Oh, oh is like he a... like that, that no, prime actually, minister? No, actually, no, better... Um... Uh, Boris Johnson. He's more, I can't recall. I do have a bit of a dodgy fringe, <laughs> yeah, you but do. come on. Yeah. I can't recall. I, I, I just, like, rather than lie, they just say, I can't remember. What's your wife's yeah. name? I just can't recall. I can't recall. <laughs> yes, I think it's something to do with WhatsApp. Um, <laughs> the, the, the app went down and they deleted all 2,000 of my messages. Uh, I'm not sure why it didn't happen to anyone else. It's incredible. I don't know why he was in Barnard Castle going to the dentist. <laughs> what are the chances? Um, so we've done it again, but right. Okay. So no, it sheds up and it has been empty ever since. Okay, so... Th th we have 30 put... grand, we're at 230 now. Oh no, more than that. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you're well up. Um, <laughs> I'm only working with, I'm working with limited information here. Okay. Right, okay. We're at 270 okay. now. Let's yeah, go. that's probably about right. right. Okay. Um, so, shed's been empty. We've done everything in it. We've literally put wood in it, trailers. I don't know what the hell we're going to do when we put cows in it because mm. we're going to have nowhere mm. to put anything. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all been um, done on, we the garage that Big Roy and Roy worked at and his brother Kyle, um, that got turned into a co-op and the fill that came out of it leveled the shed up. So that was free. So that, mm. that there you go, you don't need to add anything up. That no, was no, free. No, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Great, because there was literally like a massive big drop. Um, robots arrived. Everything's here. The channels, the, the, you know, the twin wall, the lot, it's all in the yard. We just need to actually get on and do it. So there's, we're not going to be going and, oh yeah, we need to wait for this to come. The cubicles are sat outside the house from male mattresses, um, like shout out Nirvana because she did send me a hamper yesterday and it literally made my day. Like, like I was so order. happy. Mm. I was like, I was not expecting it. You know, when something really bad's been going on and you're just like, just send me a hamper. 
Oh, nice. Sent me a hamper. I was like, oh my God, like salt biscuits. And, oh, it's oh. just amazing. Um, but yeah, so the Jersey cows themselves, we flew to Surrey the other week um, to look at cows. We were just going to look at a herd of cows. Mm -hmm. We didn't know who they were. Um, we didn't really know the quality of them or anything. We were just going to go and look at these cows. Now, bear in mind, we've been used to, you know, Blue Cross cows and sheep. I'm not particularly well versed in what a good jersey would be mm -hmm. like the fatter the better for me yeah yeah but that's, that's not the case to do that does not yeah. apply and it's something it's it's funny because we all like blanket term farming together don't we there's nothing the same about it mm. nothing the same about any of it like your arable boys and the dairy and the beef and sheep and all the rest there's nothing that's the same it's crazy um so we went to look at these cows and they are impeccable they were perfect and there's the right amount of them, the robot trained, which is just unbelievable. We were worried that we were going to have to buy, you know, 20 from there and 10 from mm. there and five from them. And then we'd end up bringing them in and we'd end up with bloody Yonis and VVD. And we were really worried that we weren't going to be TB. able to literally TB is the biggest worry. We're in a hot spot, like mm -hmm. we're in a massive area for it. Everyone around us has had it apart from us on every single side. It's crazy, but it seems to be calming down a little bit and, Moving further north, unfortunately, for you. Mm, great. Literally just drifting up the motorway. <laughs> <laughs> how um, how many cows are you looking to have? We're going to be milking 120. Um, Did you buy 120? There'll be more than that and young stock to follow. Buying a whole lot? We wanted to buy the whole... They're very expensive. Um, how much? I can't tell you. Well, I'm going to just... Don't, don't even say if I'm close here, right? Because that dairy cow and milk... I'd usually say a whole, I would think about two grand. Let's just say 120, like easy counting for me because I can't do the math if I change it from two grand. So let's say two <laughs> grand. Let's say that's quarter a million, right? So you're a quarter million plus what you've got. So you're half, over half a million in. Slightly less than that, but like, yeah, okay. they are the really good cows. So we've mm -hmm. gone and we've looked and we've gone to look for a herd of cows and we've got there and they are shit hot. They are good. Mm -hmm. And they've said, you know, they're like. So they're someone that. Just admitted she has no idea what a good Jersey cow looks like. But yeah, when you go. Oh, no, they're nice. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> pretty faces. So they literally, faces. you know, you know. Yeah. On the paper, on paper as well, they were like. Um, but you know, healthy, st you know, stock, like, you, you know, an animal if it's happy. Oh, healthy, yeah. Clean. And they were, and you know what? They were clean. Good confirmation. They were happy, yep. And this farm was absolutely gorgeous. It was like some kind of, um, like a, I want to say like a fellowship kind of trust farm. I think in the past, a lady had maybe left it in a will to a trust and then they kind of, they've kind of branched out and kind of, it was a bit strange. It was like, you know, another half of the business. And, and why did they sell the cows? They're not carrying on with the tenancy. I think from what I can gather is they, they're going to put the rent up quite a bit. Um, and they can't afford it. Uh, yeah. And then they'd, they kind of just, well, no, they could probably could afford because it. Because milk and jails but then obviously, pay. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on robots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's great. I can see this going farming, downhill. And I was going to see this going downhill just fast. So like that, <laughs> it? it's like you're buying a, f a herd of cows. Well, I have to be careful because of... this is their business as well. That I'm like, I'm like, I don't really know. No, I don't they're... assume. I know you should never assume, no. but they'll they'll be fine. Like, don't worry about that. Oh, they'll be fine. He watches um, YouTube. He didn't know who I was until I was like, oh yeah, I've got a YouTube channel. And now he like literally watches it. I'm like, oh god, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. not going to sell us his cows. <laughs> and and if, once we finish this, we'll talk about your social media, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I always just think it's funny. In fact, like you're buying the. The held from someone who's Oh no, they are they are so they they're big into showing and stuff. We okay. just wanted a bog basic herd of cows. We mm -hmm. wanted to milk cows. That's what we wanted. And Tom, who lived at Lather before us, he milked Jersey cows, and that's why we kind of yeah, fell in love with it. And I know I joke mm -hmm. and say it's about the money, it's not. You know, Roy used to be spraying weeds or spreading muck, and I'd be stood at the fence stroking Jersey cows, thinking how wonderful they were, you know, and that was kind of how we fell in love with them. We thought they were absolutely mm. brilliant. And we wouldn't be milking black and white cows. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It's not, a, it was never an option. It wasn't a, oh, we might milk jerseys. It was, we milk jerseys or mm -hmm. nothing or we do something else. That mm -hmm. was the kind of thing. So the farm was bought with that in mind. So we have, we've not deviated. Obviously we're on a limit. We're not on a limited budget. It sounds awful. It's been very well planned by Roy. And it's kind of hard to look in from the outside and say, oh yeah, they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing well. Mm -hmm. I couldn't afford to pay for my kids' school dinners. Mm -hmm. So we were, I mean, we were brassic, like, proper. And, and Royal, Royal go, it's, if Royal listens to this, he'll go mad. Like, we were skin, But everything was planned perfectly to the point where the business was going to be, you know, pay, everything was fine mm -hmm. on the farm side. But personally, we were maybe kind of struggling. 
Um, so we went to look for these cows. We just wanted a herd of cows. We just wanted to milk some cows. And then we got there and they were exceptional. And they were like, on paper, the woman was like, they're the top 1% in the country. They're this, they're that. The... And she was showing us like the butter fat they were producing. And we were like, that's what we need. And then they came with a price and we were like, <laughs> oh, you know, and we both fell off our chairs. And we were like, no, we're going to need to restructure something here because it's just... It, it, it just wasn't possible for us. And we even said, we were like, we can't afford mm -hmm. to buy them. We can't afford to buy them. We would love to take them all, but we can't afford to buy them. So anyway, we'll do, we'll do some jigging. And, you know, we were going to come to some arrangement about the young stock. We might have to borrow some money, which is something we hadn't done yet. Um, but yeah, it, they are going to be exceptional. So from what we were going to do is we were going to just stick an Angus bull on everything, mm -hmm. milk some cows. That was what we were going to do. So we were going to use sex semen on the best ones and then stick an Angus bull on. But then she, the last came around that's kind of mediating and she was like, you can't do that. It would be absolute sacrilege to just stick a beef bull on these cows. She said, you need to go more down the route of breeding premium, you know, Jersey heifers and selling them. And then that was another curveball because that wasn't the side of the business mm -hmm. I expected to even be enthusiastic about. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to milk some cows. And so it's, it's just learning all the time and changing. And that's just, it's what farming is really, isn't it? You just... You have to kind of go with the flow. But yeah, it's just going to be a, a different flow than what we expected. But I ain't wearing no white coat and showing cows. I can't. I can't bring myself to do it. I just, I'd be too nervous. I think I'd just pass out if I went in a ring. And and what about if the shit, like, oh my God, it's just too much. <laughs> and you know, they stay up all night, the girls. in the If you, when you go to like the Highland show and stuff in the, in the cattle lines, they stay up all night. And every time a cow poos, they catch it in a bucket. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. They do. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I think if they saw it, they maybe would, but I don't think this, they're up all night getting absolutely smashed drunk in the cattle lines. I know oh, that. Oh, I, 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 um, I might be, I might be a little too showing then if that's how it is. I've, I, you know, I've, even I've been there till like half four, five in the morning. Cattle lines at Highland shows something else, in it? It's mental. Oh, it's good. You go in there when it's went, dark and then come out and it's daylight. Me and, and Emma like, Gray when we were, we, we weren't, they had special wristbands, obviously, because she's dead famous and stuff. And I was just <laughs> like me. And then we couldn't get in. They wouldn't let us in. And she could have gone in and left me. And bless her, she didn't. We snuck in through the horses. Mm. So we like went round the back way and like snuck in round the horses and like, like oh, what a night it was. It was yeah. great. Yeah, we just got home at like four in the morning. It was yeah. amazing. Cattle wines <laughs> is good. But yeah, so you're, you're half a million in, into this investment. <laughs> no, because I, I, I think the thing folk don't realise is the risk. You know, oh, the, the, it's, the it's rest. extreme. Mm -hmm. the it's rest. massive. We're, we're like, in. You're you, you know, uh, and you're only partly joking, but you're doing something you, you love to do, but also you've got to make money. So we have to. So you're, you're laying out half a million pounds to try and make a pound from milking jerseys, yeah. which is insane. Exactly. But I think, but I think when you think about, about so like, we were talking the other day. So what we've done to get, I know it's this is very farmy, um, to get to where we've got to is we we bought a load of black and white um, just bullocks in, well, mm -hmm. bulls at the time, mm -hmm. and now the bullocks. And we just ran them on, like mm -hmm. literally 80, 90 of them. We had a lot on. And that was just with a view to farming something. When the suckler cows went, that was just something to farm in that mm -hmm. meantime because you don't want to go outside and there'd be nothing there. Yeah, yeah. Like, that is depressing. Yeah. Like, you go onto an empty farm. There's nothing worse than, like, an empty farm, is there? Like, mm -hmm. and the sheep in the field, they don't need to be in. And so we had all these black and white bullocks. Anyway, we was sent to the auction the other day. 1,300 quid. What you, the hell? Like, what did you buy them for? Like, oh, what, what price? Between 80 and 100. 18, 100 quid? 100 quid. Oh, my God. All right there, huh? No, oh, no, honestly. And how don't long get me wrong. They're like, months, yeah, they're uh, no, 15 old, months. Slightly older, yeah. yeah. But the the actual investment has really turned over some money, which yeah, is amazing. Well, yeah. It's Absolutely. so good. And I just think, so we're... It's a lot of money for a black and white bullet, right enough. 1,300 pounds. That's a lot of money. Some of them were 1,200 quid. Some of them were slightly less. But you know That's what I mean? They were. They, mm. I think they averaged something like 1,100 quid. Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. plucking that out because I, I, I'm just trying to remember the sheet. It's on yeah, my phone. Still, but it's, good, yeah. it's a lot of money. And me and Roy were saying, why are we keeping the cow? Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. the yeah. week after we Wait, sold... else take all the risk. The week after we sold our bulls and they made 1,200 quid from Blue Cross Cows. <laughs> and I'm yeah. going, hold on a minute. So you've got your cow, which is what? A pound a day? Yeah. yeah. It, it used yeah. to be a pound a day. It'll be more now, won't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think it's... Um, oh, I spoke to someone about this. Is it 400 and something pounds a year to keep a cow? Something like that. So not just 400 and something pounds, pounds yeah. off your 1,200 quid. Why are we keeping cows? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything, I think, going forward will probably be derived from the dairy cow just as a byproduct. Okay. Like, what are they getting out? Like, 
like, don't get me wrong, we eat well um, because we can butcher our own. Like, we do. We eat a lot of steak and stuff, but everyone eats mince. Well, you don't need a prime animal to get mince from, do you? Mm. Your burgers, well, that, that, that your meatballs. Like, um, yeah. in, in Scotland, um, it's not a thing in England, but there's a, the lawn sausage, which is a square sausage. Yeah, square sausage. But it's beef, not pork. Oh. So, so we uh, James Nisbet in a couple of weeks ago, and he said that his father, who is a butcher, says that that's their biggest earner. Is yeah. is the mm-hmm. lawn is it is in mince too? I'd imagine it's the same idea. Is it's it always a beef? Lawn sausages. Yeah, yeah, is it? Yeah, pork would generally be links. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you will get beef links as well, but I imagine they do beef links yeah, down yeah, south. Yeah, yeah. But we always mm-hmm. do beef in the. But it, well, it's like ten percent beef, and the rest is fat and yeah, yeah bits of gristle, gristle <laughs> and bever <laughs> swept off the floor. A bit of tongue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when. Like in your sort of business plan, when do you see yourself getting to a point where you are making a profit? Um, by the time we've paid the money back, it'll be a fair few years, won't it? For what we've put in. Mm-hmm. Uh, from a business perspective, you're obviously going to have to pay your investment back to from what you've put in. Um, but we've never really... I mean, like how often do you get paid being a beef farmer? Twice a year when you sell your calves or if you sell a cold cow? Something like that. Mm-hmm. To have an actual milk check coming in is going to be quite a novelty for us. But then again, all your everything else will go up as well. So we'll be. And have you already? What color of Range Rover are you going to get? <laughs> Behave. We have got. White. No, Roy's got. Roy's got an old ML. What's We've that? had it like a, a Mercedes ML. Okay. Like it's it's amazing. It's oh it's it's yokel. Oh, is, it just, you know, is it like a big car or a wee car? Is, is, it, is it a Jeep or is it a uh, fancy, it's like is that a fancy a, race car? Like no, a, like a Mercedes four by four. You know the ones you see, okay. But a really old one. Oh, what like the the G wagon? No, no. Oh my God, no, oh, no, not so that cool. posh. They are expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like That's an old Merc before. ML. Uh, like a Jeep, like a like, like a, a SUV. Yes. SUV. Yes. 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 Mm. Okay. Sort okay. of like a a crappy Range Rover. Yeah. Okay. Like, but it's really old. A bit more expensive. Well, and he bought it off a fella uh, called Brian Ronan actually. Um, he used shout to, out to he Brian. Used to breed, <laughs> yeah, shout out to Brian. He'll never listen. He used to breed Angus's years and years ago. Um. And his dogs, he had two Labradors, and they chewed the hell out of this car. Like, there was nothing left. No oh. door cards, no ceiling, no nothing. Anyway, Roy bought it off him for, like, 1,200 quid. I'm sure it was, like, nine years ago or something. And he's literally kept it going. But, like, he picks Anna up at school in it, and she cries. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> Like, honestly. <laughs> what age is she? She's 11. Oh, yeah. That's like, a, literally. Or, like, yeah. it'll be really cruel and he'll, like, shove a sheep in the back and there'll be, like, piss everywhere and, like, it'll sting. Sheep's head out the window. Yeah, like, literally. That's it's so good. embarrassing. But, like, this car, it's, like, what a pickup would be. So it's, like, barley everywhere. There's dust. <laughs> there's crap. It won't have been washed since he bought it. And, I mean, in fact, do you know what? Roy would be able to tell you, if I rang him, he would be able to tell you the last time that car was washed. Yeah. And it'll be, like, 10 years ago or something. Ridiculous. <laughs> but that's is. It keeps it running. Yep. It broke down the other week, and then he ended up having a new, I can't read, drive, some steering rack or whatever. Mm-hmm. Spent a fortune on this car. Just I keep it all going. Yeah. Oh, he's got to keep but, it going. But what uh, colour, just, you know, obviously, what colour will the Range Rover be? I was thinking more of a new Valtra before a Range Rover, to be fair. Well, but oh, tractors. Yeah. Yeah, okay, like that. Business expenses. Well, the Range yeah, Rover's, business the Range Rover's a business expense. That's a good I need thing. a good trailer, before, really. before, isn't it? I'd need a trailer, wouldn't I, as well? It may as well. Yeah, yeah. Why not get a chopper? Do your own silage, keep it in house. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant a chopper as in a helicopter. <laughs> no, 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 no. That comes later. I don't know which one I'd be safer driving, to be fair. <laughs> you need to sell for houses first for that, uh, for the chopper. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I jest, and you're in, you're, you've obviously taken on a lot, and you're in for a big challenge. Now, we're unbelievable, mentally, that's nearly an hour. A couple of things we need to cover. Right. Good luck with that venture. Very excited. We'll see it, obviously, on social media. Yep. Let's talk about that. You do it on your go. Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, I want to hear about how you got into social media side of things. Oh, it was a total accident. Right, okay. The whole thing's an accident. So I used to like, I used to do, you know, your own normal Instagram. Mm-hmm. Like, I post pictures of the kids, pictures of running. Every time I got a PB, I'd be like, look at me, I'm amazing. It didn't work. You know, I didn't do it if I didn't put it on Instagram. <laughs> And it was just You guys nothing. are so early. <laughs> <laughs> like literally like 23 minutes, 5K, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone worship me. <laughs> but like really, it just was normal. Like what anyone else mm-hmm. would use it for, it was nothing special. It didn't do anything. I had about 300 followers or something and they were my mates. And then COVID hit and I wanted, I'd always had a bit of a Twitter account, but mm-hmm. only for farming. And that's the only thing that I'd kept just farming. And I only really followed farming people. Okay. But like, you know what an algorithm's like? It just kind of throws you down a rabbit hole, doesn't it? And then you end up just going more farming kind of thing. Um, so thought nothing of it. And 
I just wanted video editing software that was free. Mm -hmm. And I think I just typed it on Google, video editing, and it just came up with TikTok. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'll have that. And I just edited a video, posted it so that I could save it to my phone. And it was crap. And used what was it, it of? It was of, the first one was of me and some uh, pencil crayons. It sounds ridiculous. And it was like, I could be brown, I could be blue, I could be, you know, that me. Oh, okay. And then I literally had all the, the colors of, because I have a, obviously an extensive art, like supplies collection. Um, and that was the first one I ever did. And then the second one, it was a calf that had been born in the cubicles. Mm -hmm. And it was just covered in shit. Um, she was meant to be. Um, she was just meant to be geld, this cow. She was meant mm -hmm. to be going. She was actually in with the heifers. And then I went out and this Angus is just stood looking at me like, what is that? And this calf was absolutely free. It was like minus three. The calf was freezing. Like, you know, when you put your hand in its mouth and just, mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. very, very low. So I dragged it up onto the side of the cubicles and I hollered for Roy, but he was on the tractor. He was scraping out and he couldn't hear me. So I literally hollered in this awful, screechy voice like, Roy! like this and then thought nothing of it and then I was like oh my farming friends on Twitter love this story so I brought them both into the stables um which are like all bull pens and I had her in one and she was like looking over at me over the bars and then I had the calf on the floor and I hair dried the calf and dried the calf anyway it was gonna drop dead to be fair and I thought well what can I do I'll take it inside so I shoved it in front of the cooker and I made a tent in front of the cooker and like you know tried to get it warm anyway calf came around it was absolutely fine I showed tube in it um, just get some warm milk into it. And then I shoved it back outside with its mum. Luckily, she took it for, by some small miracle and she'd had it away from her overnight. She took it, mm -hmm. which Sorry. does yeah. not happen. She'd yeah. normally just look at it and walk away. Considering it had been born in the cubicle, she was only a heifer. She'd be lean to you. Like oh, that. yeah, she wasn't looking good. So she took this calf, everything was fine. And I made a really, now I look back, it was a really crappy video of like the process mm -hmm. of doing this calf. Just posted it on Twitter for my mates. And everyone was like, oh, yeah, it got like a couple of people commenting on it, like people that I knew. Um, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And then well, a week went by and I went back on TikTok to make another cute video mm -hmm. for Twitter. Well, it had gone viral in the meantime, but because I didn't have notifications on, I didn't know. Mm. Didn't have a clue. So it got like, it, I remember watching it going from like 30,000 views. And I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. But then... Obviously, it got onto the wrong side of TikTok and it was... Oh. Yeah, you're getting abuse. Oh, hell I. Mm -hmm. But then all the farmers on TikTok who love a bit of, like, trouble, don't they? They'd all come in and they were arguing, why are your passageways dirty? That's disgusting. And I'm like, because it was six o'clock in the morning and we we're mm -hmm. about to scrape out. What do you want them to be like? You want me to mm -hmm. bung mm -hmm. their ass up? Like, there was just nothing you could say to, like, stem this flow. So I ended up ringing people and I was like, do I delete it? Like, am I mm -hmm. doing something wrong? Mm -hmm. Am I one of them people that people go, oh, you shouldn't be posting that? Mm -hmm. And it was one of them videos that was very borderline mm -hmm. because I'd not only was the calf covered in shit, and it was, it was literally in the passageway. Um, I'd taken it off its mum. I'd given it powdered milk. I showed myself shaking the milk up and tubing the calf. So that's another no-no. Why didn't you give it its own milk? And I'm like, did you want it to die? Like, mm -hmm. but you couldn't, you just couldn't. And that's, I learned very much a hard mm -hmm. way about social media, what you, you just can't stop it. And then once it started going, it just went and then, I just started, I thought, well, I might as well carry on just for crack. Mm -hmm. It was just COVID. Everyone was at home. So I just started posting more random videos. Just more more about, like, general farm life. I did a few. I did go down the route of, like, oh, you know, anti-vegan. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a farmer. You know, you must see this. And and then very quickly that, thought, what's the point? Yeah. Yeah, I would hate to have a relative called vegan. <laughs> I would. Like, uh, to have an anti called vegan would be strange. <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> it must get confusing for her. I have an anti called veggie. <laughs> anti veggie? So you're anti veggie and anti vegan? Anti veggie. What anti -vegan. family you have? Very I strange know, family. Very odd. Very strange. I cut, the, I cut the meat pie with the same knife <laughs> and give it a. <laughs> <laughs> you're cruel. You're cruel. But yeah, no, okay, so. Uh, so it was a total accident. Social yeah. media was 100% an accident. And then just the TikTok fight, it's just started growing. I own it was an accident. Were you? Yeah. <laughs> no. What's in Cami? What? It was, it was, oh, what many years between you and your last sibling? Seven. Seven years. You so were totally an accident. They had, yeah, was they had an three. accident. They had Who three. in their right mind would do that? They had three, then what, seven years later, I own it appears like accident. No. Anyway. Uh, what took great? I don't, I, I don't agree. What There's took great tears for me? in her eyes. Yeah, no, it's okay though. Don't worry about it. They love you anyway. <laughs> they love you anyway, they told me. Um, 
They're like, Cammy, thanks it so much for taking It took a few years, but they like you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got used to it. They just accepted their fate, and that's and here they are. Um, so yeah, so so, and where can people find you on social media? Uh, Charlotte Ashley Farm on everything. Okay, dead everything. easy. Charlotte Ashley Farm. Charlotte, Charlotte Ashley Char- Farm. Charlotte. Charlotte I concentrate Ashley now more on YouTube. I just think I I did I did like a two maybe two lamins seasons kind of thing on mm-hmm. TikTok, and I just got sick of putting a load of effort into making a video about lambing and getting it taken down. Yeah. And Tec- I just got Tec- sick of it. TikTok's mm. quite trash. Isn't yeah, it? it's just, it's it's cheap entertainment. Yeah. Like, but it isn't... doesn't really... It's a low quality audience. Yeah, very, very. You could be... Mm-hmm. You could YouTube's be... a really high quality audience. Yeah, it's a But big it's what difference. it all is doing as well. Um, sorry, I know we don't have time for a tangent, but this is just a very quick one. Like, uh, Can I just confirm, uh, friend, that um, you're not upset by me saying you're an accent, you know it's a joke? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't have to say that, but social media is weird. Case. Well, it's well, weird. Well, it is, isn't it? It yeah, is. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. Because, like, oh, yeah. And, and not everyone... Well, I know you're a laugh, And that's maybe a offensive to English people. It probably is. But, like, Scottish humour is, is very brutal. Like, all we do is be, na- each other. be nasty to each other. Yeah, yeah, and mm-hmm. I like it. Like, like that's, that is that that is true. Like, especially farmers they always... just call me a no, bitch where I come y- from. Yeah. <laughs> like, none of my friends would ever say anything nice to me. No, like, no, no, ever, no, 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 um, no. And, and if you're and sad, you go, pat on the back. That'll do. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. just I just thought we should clarify that. that really? That's well, I know you know it's a joke, but because yeah. because you kind of like went quite quiet there, folk will think that you were upset by I've that. I've just realised there's no toggles on this. No, no, because they're just That's so clever. It's good. PTO I'm, shafts. I'm, I'm just getting Safety rid of them. Safety first. Kids, when you're shearing, I'm just getting rid of them and uh, shearing. Yeah, no, I like yeah. it. What's the point of them? Whoever uses them. Oh, exactly. Ex- what actually are they for? Do you know the only time I use them? Yeah, Oh. When you're shearing with midges, you don't. No, you, I don't know about. We well, don't get that. In, what are them? Uh, it's like we flies. Do you, do you not get midges? Oh no, of course. you don't know what midges are. Well, I know what midges are, but like they're not. The oh, yeah, they're really bad up you. here. No, oh, they are they're they're awful. They ruin summer. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know why they, do you get them? And they, we don't. They ruin lives. They're like a um, Scottish thing. So, so you shear, you shear in the summer. Should we all just sit there with hoods on? Yeah, I've not been given mine yet. We shear like that. You you literally leave yourself just enough to see it with one eye, and you shear like that. And, and that's I true. once I once do tried you? to shear oh. a sheep, and then you're soaked with sweat, which helps kill them as well because you're just a sheet of sweat because you're so warm. God. But it's better. Have than you the, tried that skin so soft? Yeah, apparently yeah, a lot of folk do that, but it's not like see no. when you're sweating profusely. Yeah, it just falls off. Sweating off doesn't do. Do I feel like I'm itchy? Like talking about midges. Do you live in your cup? Oh, they are terrible. Yeah, it's like a haven. Oh, no way. Mm. What a tangent. But like, so, yeah, yeah, Charlotte Ashley Farms on all yep. social media. All social Hopefully media. I do, concentrate more on, I do concentrate more on YouTube. Yeah. I just found it was a, a story I could put across myself. And but YouTube's mm. just a better audience. So. It is, isn't it? And everyone's been really positive. And I find it was more like of a, it sounds so, so corny. It's more of a community. Yeah. Like the people I'm talking to are the same people. Yeah. And like they have like. Yeah, Sheep Game's great. Like, man, oh, I love so the folk. Oh, it's so good. And do you have like Race to First? Yeah, I have a lot of folk I love first. it. Honest to God, I love it. So in like, fairness, I have that in, that's in Facebook as well now yeah, as well. Yeah, I know. Well, they've gone first, over to Facebook. Yeah. Like, literally, first, like, you put a it? video on and the first person to comment wins. So they just type first. But, like, it's the same five went, or six can people. Can I just confirm? You went absolutely nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, nothing. So is it just, like, between them? Oh, yeah, and it's, right. like, competition oh, to get to first. Just, just, just something funny. It's, it's like something. when you try getting, like, at midnight to wish your friend a happy birthday. Yes. First. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly that. Again, that's not... It's not really a guy thing, that, for sure. No. No, not at all. But yeah. nice, girls are nice. I just forget day. people's yeah. birthdays. I won't worry. Yeah. yeah. So, but you, you touched on that you have such an extensive art. You said, obviously, I have an extensive art collection, but that isn't obvious to yeah, anyone. Yeah, no, sorry. It it's is just not obvious, obvious at all. So. obvious to me because I know what you've done. When let's, I was let's talk about this. Yeah, Iona, 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 could you it. grab Fiona, please? Of course I can. Fiona so, is here, ladies and gentlemen. If you're watching, Fiona. I want you're listening, but we, if you're watching on the YouTube, and please do jump over and, and see this. Iona is bringing Fiona over here. Oh, you might here. want to take your tags out. No, it's fine. The tags have still to be popped in, but where will we put... Let's have our... I'll, I'll, well, I'll hold her here yeah. like this. Right. You just hold it for like oh. 20 minutes like that. But no, well, I can, I, can, I can hold her like this. Here, right. Yeah. So, right, let me... I'll put in front of this camera. Yeah, I'm going in front of me there. Yeah. Well, take, a, take a tag out. It looks silly. Do you not like it? Okay, okay. It looks silly. Like, take them out. They do say Fiona on them. Okay, so... <laughs> right in front of... Iona, hold it for Iona, a second. Fiona. There we go. <laughs> We have Iona holding Fiona. For anyone watching YouTube now, this, talk me through what you've done here. So I started, I like I'm very, very an itchy person, you know what I mean? I've got to be doing something. Anyway, it's I like an outlet, like YouTube's an outlet. I'm yeah, mental health, health issues very, are standard. Very, very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. Yeah. Like I've got to be able to express myself and it just makes me really happy. Anyway, so I started um, doing artwork years ago, what, 
12, 13 years ago, um, I just, I saw my friend shearing his wobble and, and she said, was going to burn the fleece. That was it. And, and I was thought like, I might do something with I it. I was like, what the hell? Bad. Like, why would you Fine. burn I that? I like it. <laughs> do you like it? No, I feel bad here. I'm going to do this right here. Let's just stick it on the floor. Yeah. We've seen it now. You've seen it now. You've seen it. It's boring. You've seen it. Beautiful. It's not boring at all. It's absolutely incredible. Let it me, actually is me, incredible. Let, yeah, let me just quickly, like, just, this is all felted. Needle felt. Wool, yeah. Wool. 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 Needle it's wool. all wool. And it, this is a real fleece, and it's been done to, and it includes some of Fiona's wool in here as well, because I sent a little bit down, and it's absolutely incredible. And this will be raffled off for charity. Yeah, whatever, we, charity. We, we plan to do it for, with Fiona's fleece being done with other things, but that's taken a while. Um, can I give you that yeah. back just to sit? Uh, I, I, it's been a wild chat. Yeah. I knew it would be. I knew when you come up, it would be. Yeah, wild. I know there was actually no structure to that whatsoever. No, but was I, there? Do you know what? Quick, sometimes I write like, little cards with things to write there, but I just knew it wasn't going to work that way with no. you. No. Because. Oh, no, because you're, you're quite, like, oh, squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very much like myself, you're all over the place. And uh, of course, we've touched on Fiona there. Fantastic thing. Everybody, do really have a wee glance on the YouTube. We'll put a picture up on Facebook, and, and that will be going to some sort of charity auction or probably a raffle at some point once we know what's happened with the rest of our fleece so thanks very much for that yeah. charlotte you're what an you absolute legend i think we're gonna make it into we many few i've not heard back yet but ben from Dulscone is doing a lot with it but i think they're gonna try and make it into like many few like use wee many bits of will yeah just wee tokens just like i said yeah. don't try and do it in fancy just clean mm. it clean the will mm. card that or whatever you do and make wee few owners yeah and and we can we can just sell them off just sell them as wee tokens so yeah, yeah. we'll see but listen it's been great you will hire in for another hour or so. We'll get some lunch. Are you, yeah, you want to rush back home? Oh, dinner. Get a wee bite of lunch, eh? Oh, dinner. Okay. Is there well, a McDonald's round here? <laughs> we could do better than that. You can take the girl out of Preston. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, no, uh, uh, fantastic to have you here. It's been a, a, rare, a rare laugh, I should say. <laughs> um, and good luck with this half a million you've spent. <laughs> Plus the farm they had to buy. They've got 1.5, they've got 2 million I mean, down. I mean, I know. It's a black hole. They're, they're never getting out of that. But anyway, you oh, can yeah. tell us. But they're doing what they love. Hey. Uh, Oh, Aye. she's good. Oh, she's good. <laughs> it goes back to the mental health and just surviving. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just we're going to be skint and we can't afford to eat, but we're gonna be happy. Yeah, happy. Yeah. And that is all that actually matters. So, yes. thanks very much, Charlotte. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. So there we go. End of another fantastic podcast. Lots of laughs had. I must say, lots of fun with Charlotte. A few things I had to cut out because she, she is a girl. She is a girl. She likes a laugh. But it, no, it was very good and I hope you enjoyed that one. Thanks for listening. Again, please do check out fedbyfarmers.co.uk. We are now shipping to the USA and Canada. So have a look there. We're still working on European shippings. We don't have that nailed down yet, but we will get there very soon. Thanks for listening. See you for the next one.